Hello boys and girls, today we're going to be talking about an object thrown vertically upward. So let's imagine as our object we have a ball and we throw it vertically upward. So now let's draw it into perspective. So we have the ground here and we have a ball. So the ball is going to be our object in this scenario. It could be any other object that you wish to use. So let's just mark it as a ball. So we're going to be throwing it upward and our, we're going to be throwing it upward at an initial velocity. So now we're going to get into our formulas. So before we get into our formulas, it has to be understood that as soon as the ball leaves the ground, whatever the ground is, it could be a table, it could be a bench, it could be uh, just the ground outside, but as soon as the ball or the object leaves the ground, there is no force besides gravity that is affecting it. So in other terms, there is only the ground and the ball. The ground which is attracting the ball... During the ball's motion in this problem, we're going to neglect air resistance. Thus, besides the ground and the ball, there is no other factor contributing to its movement. Since we figured out that only gravity is affecting the ball's motion in this problem, and the force in any circumstance and any force is the reason to acceleration of any object, and thus, and since the force affecting this ball is gravity, and gravity is pulled down, we just came to the conclusion that besides any other force, only force of gravity affects the ball's motion in this problem. <clears throat> so since the force of gravity pulls the object down and force is the reason to acceleration, that means that the acceleration will always be downwards. Let's figure out what's going to happen to the velocity of the ball after the ball is thrown. So we know that the force of gravity is going the opposite direction of what the ball is thrown. So it is safe to remove the option that the ball will man maintain its velocity due to gravity pulling it down. The ball isn't going to accelerate upward either because gravity is going to be pulling it down no matter what. So it is safe to come to the conclusion that as the ball goes up, the speed will decrease. Due to the velocity decreasing continuously, that means at one point it's going to reach 0 meters a second as its velocity, and that's going to be its maximum height. As the ball goes up, the speed will continuously go down. At one point, the speed will reach 0 meters a second which means that the ball has officially reached its maximum height. So the ball goes up and up and up and up while the speed of it decreases. And once the speed is zero meters per second, it has reached its maximum height, which we could use H to label its peak. Now we're going to get into the formulas. The first formula we're going to figure out is to see at which point is the ball's velocity. To figure that out, this is the formula we're going to use. V equals VI minus GT. V is the point of which is the ball's velocity. VI is the initial velocity. And G is the force of gravity which is 9.8 meters a second squared. Since the gravity is going the opposite direction, we have a minus here, and the t is time. Let's do a sample problem with this form. We'll say our initial velocity is 30 meters a second. We want to figure out the velocity after one second, and for simplistic purposes, our acceleration is 10 meters a second squared. So let's plug in all of the variables into our formula. V equals 
30 meters a second subtracted by 10 meters a second squared times 1 second. So we could take out one of these seconds and now we have 30 meters a second subtracted by 10 meters a second. So V equals 10 meters a second. So at the point of 1 second our velocity is 20 meters a second. So now we have proved that the speed decreases. As you can see it started at 30 and at 1 second it was 20. So now let's figure out the speed at 4 seconds. So once again we'll put our variables here. So initial velocity equals 30 meters a second. Our time now is not 1 second but it's now 4 seconds. And our acceleration still stays 10 meters a second squared for simplistic purposes. So now let's plug the variables into our formula. Velocity equals 30 meters a second subtracted by 10 meters a second squared times 4 seconds. So once again we could get rid of the seconds and now we have 30 meters a second subtracted by 40 meters a second. Now what does that equal to? That equals to negative 10 meters a second. As you can see, we ended up with a negative 10 meters a second. Now what does the negative mean? The negative means that we're now going in a downward direction. The ball is now going downwards and going to the ground rather than going up. So it is safe to assume that at one point the velocity of the ball was 0 meters per second, which is its maximum height. Now that brings up an interesting question. How long will it take for the ball to reach its maximum height? So to get the time it takes to reach the maximum height, let's simplify this formula. So as we stated previously, at this point, the velocity is 0 meters a second. So that means the velocity is equivalent to 0 meters a second. So now we could say 0 is equivalent to the initial velocity subtracted by the acceleration times the time. To simplify this equation, we could add uh, acceleration times the time on each side. And we have acceleration times the time is equivalent to the initial velocity. To simplify further and have time in its own sector, we could divide by the acceleration and we end up with time is equivalent to the initial velocity divided by the acceleration. So now we'll go back to our variables. Our initial velocity will be 30 meters a second and our acceleration will still be 10 meters a second squared. So now we just plug it into our formula and we have time is equivalent to 30 meters a second divided by 10 meters a second squared. So now 30 divided by 3 is 3. Meters cross out and this crosses out so t is equivalent to 3 seconds. Thank you for tuning into this lesson. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below and subscribe, and many more videos to come.